Storyteller here, Let's Deaton, reporting for duty. Um, it's a dress rehearsal, final night of dress rehearsal here at Good Neighbors Theater. And um, I want to just get a little back scenes here in the green room of dress rehearsals here. But, oh, that didn't work. Let's try it again. When you work at the vet, right? Don't tell any lies that you don't want repeated, okay? No. Do you remember Bill's cockatiel? Bill? Bill? He got when he was 15? Bill, Bill Clark? For his 15th birthday. How there? Hey! Hi there. Well, who's this little? I was pregnant with Mila when she passed away. Yeah. Who's this little girl? Introduce yourself. Mila. Mila? <laughs> Mila? It's Mila. Very good. And this girl right here? I am Amy. And you're the mother of? The ghost girl. The ghost girl, yes. <laughs> and this is Mila's mother. Yes. Mother of Mila. <laughs> and then over here's uh, Miss uh, Melva, and there's old what's his name uh, Morgan Tucker Hammock. Both. Morgan Tucker. <laughs> Just Whichever kidding. One you need. Patricia, John. <laughs> oh, not this guy. Linda. <laughs> that's not Linda. No, that's Linda. That's old uh, 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 Camargo, Camaro, Tom. And then this is uh, uh, Pam. Just like my mother's name, and then uh, uh, Mr. Uh, oh, you know, Mr. Retired uh, after years of hard work, uh, Mr. Smith. Yeah. Howdy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. With a K. Yeah. Kale. Yeah, Kale. No. His Keith. name. Keith. Yeah, Keith. Uh, yeah, yeah. How do you get? Can't even remember his own people. Much less his lines. And there's the preacher John slash uh, Kale. Mm -hmm. You got a last name, Kale? <laughs> Uh -uh. You just kale. Not in this play. <laughs> and then there's old Seth, and he's also uh, man number two and Mr. Haddix. Man two and Mr. Haddix. 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 Yeah. Let's see here. Here's the. Anyway, let's go out here and the background. Oh, we got the strobe lights going. These boys are keeping everybody straight. Yep. And we got the good old stage at Good Neighbors Theater. Scene set for our stage is set for scene one. This might be this record your brother needs to play. Bye bye love. Bye bye sweet caress. A lot of fun up here at Good Neighbors Theater. A lot of work. We sell shotguns, low prices. Let's see what's going on out here. Actually, we've already got innocent bystanders out here. Hi there. Hi. Going to watch the show tonight? Yes. Good, good, good. Yes. You want to say your name for posterity? Irene Camargo. I'm Thomas's no sister. No way. I am. Irene Camargo, Thomas's yeah. sister. Yes. Are you going to go out there with him to Arizona? No. I've got two grandkids in Lexington. They're going to stay Thomas. right here, right? I'm staying here. So I'm gonna go visit. There you go. Hey, I may go visit too. They're my. They're the, he's the sibling I'm closest to. Oh. So we have a good time together. I bet she's got some good stories to tell. Uh oh. Speaking of stories, right here's two story girls. Oh no, no, don't. Nope. Hey, look at all. Look at all the buttons. Just in case. Okay. So and I do it all by myself you. when yes. we're not in performance, and then I have a handy ten, helper. Ten fingers and three toes, you can do it all, right? Yep, that's it. Very good. Shauna? Yes, ma'am. Thanks Sir. for the man. It helped, it helped calm my nerves. Okay. Or jazz them up, one of the two, right? Well, I probably need that as well. <laughs> hey, um, is it raining? Hey, Beverly. I mean, not, you're not Beverly tonight. You are. No, I am Edney. 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 Well. And I'm with Liege, my husband Liege. Liege slash Keith. Yes. Well, no, slash Jim, because he was Jim last play and I was Amanda. So, yeah. You light up my life. Yeah, you got they that. They should have made you. A gentleman's wife. She's got it. Oh, looky here. Here's a, oh, he's getting ready. Do you know where Storm's at? I've not seen him yet. If we see him, we'll send him back there. Anyway, this here is called Appalachian Ghost Stories. 
And uh, here's a little more back scenes prep here of fine folks here. This is how it puts together. There's who put this together. And I think I think he she might have brought him with her. I did. <laughs> or I vice versa. Him into this. Yeah, I'm very good. Good girl. Are we doing this again, guys? Absolutely. This is my favorite part. Very nice. Well, We've made a full some, circle I'm here. Make some to put in the pot for you guys. Do you want a little bit of sugar oh. in your mug? And we're walking up here. Okay. Video camera coming through. Video camera coming through. Oh, we got don't let me don't let me get anything that doesn't need to be, you know. Making uh, memories here. <laughs> making memories. <laughs> All right. Well, we made the full circle. Well, um, Thomas's. Uh, and we'll pause it right there on Keith Smith. I heard your name is really Lige. 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 What's your name in the play, ma'am? Francis. You're Francis, yes. There's a little ghost hiding out under the... Oh, two ghosts. <laughs> well, no, that means break a leg I'm, in the I know, audience, I know, right? I know, but he takes things seriously. No, Tom, we're not being that serious. <laughs> He's like Morgan. When you tell him to do something, he goes extra. And that's the narrator and the sound lady. Okay. Yeah, huh, huh. Well, uh, let's see. We got the ghost all dressed, dressed up. The sick ghost at that. Oh, don't say that. I'm just a, I'm just a friend. Wait, no. Let me do what I did in the last one. Hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't do anything. All right, one more time. We're just going to walk through and get the feedback. Hey. Hello. Let's deepen behind the camera. So let's deepen. Hi, hi, the girl. Hi, hi. Can I do that one dance? Why is this door open? Huh? She's like, why is this door open? All right, we don't need to film anybody. That doesn't know. All right, we're going on. I noticed something different about your uh, suspenders, man. Yeah. What's, what's the, hey, what's the problem, man? It's really pronouncing my uh, <laughs> my 52 year, year old. All right, well, we're in the green room. The play has started. Hey, I'm going. I'm going. Your chin is still white. <laughs> it is white, isn't it? He's talking about the gray in my beard. All right. And the last dress rehearsal is underway. If you intend on staying in this place, it appears that you do since you've paid money to do so, then be aware that this is a place where the telling of stories equates to that of life itself. Stories that attempt to bring meaning to the puzzle of why cannot we walk on this earth forever? and other stories which seem to imply that maybe we do.
There ain't nothing here to scare a body, no ways. Besides, I've got Virgil's old shotgun over there in the corner if I need it. Don't you never hear no strange noises or nothing? Ooh, Mama, tell us a ghost story. Tell us the big toe. You girls are getting too big to hear such foolishness. Besides, that's the main reason we had to come up here tonight. You and your sister were too afraid to stay at home with your daddy being gone all night. Well, then tell us about that fella that got run over last Saturday. Saturday up by Turner's Creek. He said he was just a lying there in the road with his coat pulled up over his head and pig pulled blood. Well, for goodness sake, Sammy. Yeah, and Jerry Deaton and his boy Junior was the first ones to come up on him. They said Jerry was too scared and made little Junior get out of the truck and go see, and him just 12 year old. Well, shame on that Jerry Deaton, if that's the truth. Who was that feller anyway? They said he was a miller from over on Frozen Creek, weren't kin to nobody around here. Somebody had seen him in a fight with Big Rob Turner there at the Bloody Bucket up in Jackson, and next thing you know, he was found dead in the road on the Middle Fork. Jimmy Noble told me that there's a lump of dirt behind his house. It never told me right. Well, I comes up from out of the ground. <laughs> yeah, and he told us he hears his dead papa's wheelchair rolling around right upstairs, all by himself, when nobody's up there. Oh, you girls just stop it. But Mama, this is fun. I don't care. You stop it. Winchester just now and uh, Oh Daddy, it was awful! Some old man walked right through here last night and disappeared back there in the kitchen! And you're gonna go kill Kenny Spicer this afternoon! <laughs> Lordy, Francis, what are these girls going on about? I swear, Warren G, some old feller walked through that door last night, but 
about 10 o'clock, carrying a big old stick, walked right through here, never said a word, went right out into the kitchen. And then one of the girls fainted, knocked the rest of them into me. I had the gun stuck through the door, the gun went off, and, and there were nobody there. Sure sounds like you girls had a pretty wild night. So let me see. Say some just old, some old fella just came strolling through the room, huh? You say he had a big old walk, huh? And he just up and vanished? I can tell by how you're talking, Warren G. Turner, that you don't believe us. Well, girls, what would you think if I came in here telling a tale like that? Come on, let's go to the house and cook up some breakfast. I'm sorry, but y'all can tell me all about it there. As soon as we get home, you're calling that Mr. Spicer, and you're going to give him a piece of my mind. <laughs> Why don't you ask your daughter? He seems to know her awful well. Young lady, you got some explaining to do when we get home. I think we might just go visit that young lady, huh? I just cannot believe this. Me neither. A lone man, unknown to them all, walked into their house, simply vanished into thin air in the kitchen. Now the door to the rear of the house was locked and bolted from the inside, and the freshly fallen snow outside the home showed no tracks in any direction. So that belabors of how does a man, oh, and I uh, forgot, the women were all of sound mind, never known to concoct such tales. So that belabors of how does a man walk into a home and simply disappear into a cupboard, a small cupboard, in a wooden clabbered home. The evidence would seem to imply that no man could ever have done that. Now picture yourself in the home of a family about to endure a technological nightmare. Technology that to us seems quite antiquated. In fact, hardly technology at all. But in its day, it was a means of communicating with those out of sight and out of mind. Do we just stop talking to one another after we seemingly leave this life? Stopping communication seems as, as uh, in the process of communication seems as alien to us as a a black hole in the deepest, darkest void of space. So do we not talk to each other after we seemingly leave this planet? After you hear this story, that would be left for you to decide.
mercy, Edney. Mommy still thinks that old party line phone's hooked up. I swear it's going on a year now since we got our private line. I told you we should have took that thing down last week while she was in the hospital with her pneumonia. Now, Lise, you know it ain't hurting nothing for her to sit there and occupy herself. She misses that little half ring on that old phone. And Lord only knows how much she misses Orlini and Esther. I just don't understand it. She wasn't even that good of friends with them, Eddie. But you'd have thought she lost two sisters when them old women died. Well, I guess when you sit and listen to two people talk for nearly 20 years, you take up with them more than you think. What's funny about it is, uh, them two old gals didn't live a hundred yards from one another, but they'd get on there every day and tie up that line talking about, well, nothing. Mostly gossiping about everybody up and down the creek. They was just lonely, Liege. And Orlini was nearly blind. Well, as for Esther, well, she was too afraid of snakes being on the path to her sister's house to, to go next door. And that's how they visited. Besides, it kept your mommy with something to look forward to. I know it, but I swear, for 20 years, we couldn't say nothing to a soul without everybody on the creek knowing our business. And besides that, I didn't need to know that Esther McIntosh's left foot was larger than her right, which made finding <laughs> shoes a torment. And you, re and you remember, for two solid years, that boy of Claude Smith dated some old gal over on Cow Creek. He'd ring her up on the phone and call her Sweetie Pie. And she'd call him Sugar Plum. And then when they got done with that, they'd sit and listen to one another breathe back and forth. I'll tell you, I was glad when they took that thing out. Now, Lise, you know it weren't all that bad. Everybody on the creek's practically like family because of that old phone line. And I seem to recall about ten years ago when the creek washed out your daddy's backer crop, don't you? Mm-hmm. And when Luther Denton called up from the bank that fall wanting his money, well, there weren't no money. And then... About two days later, a jar with $52.40 turned up out there on the back porch. Mm -hmm. I guess you're right, Edney. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember Daddy come in and carrying that mason jar, and he stood over there by the stove for the longest. And he was a looking down at it and a petting it, mm -hmm. just like it was a kitten. <laughs> I reckon that's the only time in all the years I knowed him that I saw him with tears in his eyes. Yeah. It does make me sad, though, that she thinks Orlini and Esther are still on there talking. Her mind sure is a slipping. Morning, Mommy. What's Esther and Orlini are talking about today? Oh, mostly the same. Orlini did say she done forgot to get Nipper's dog food again. Please, you reckon you could run our table scraps up to her this evening? Oh, sure, Mommy. I don't mind a bit. was up to Hazard last week to the hospital, but he's home now, and they say he's doing better. Well, I, I don't know. I, that's just what she told Arlene just now. Surely Eileen or Tommy would have called up by now about Uncle West had he died. It's 
Say, ain't it time for your stories? Yes. Days of our lives. How's that go? Like, like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. Oh, I bet they're having a time on there today. Somebody's always making it hard on somebody else. Didn't somebody get kidnapped or brainwashed or something on there last week? It may have. Leash. I'm getting worried about Mommy. She can't hardly play that game no more. And yesterday, well, she got herself all ready and went and sat in the car like it was Saturday morning and time sure to go to the shop wise over in Google. I know it. She's getting worse. But there ain't nothing we can do about it. Doctor says it's hardening of the arteries or something like that. Hello? Well, morning, Eileen. Say, how's a... Oh, Lordy, honey, you don't say. When did it happen? About 11 o'clock last night. Well, is there anything we can do for you right now? Well, I'll be up in about an hour or so. Well, God love you, honey. Yes, I'll be sure and tell Mommy. What's happened, Leash? That was Cousin Eileen over to Boonville. She said Uncle West, sure enough, had died last night. Said he went to bed complaining about his arm and... When they checked on him this morning, he was dead. Mommy, how'd you know? That. You don't reckon. Please. I'm huh? over at Mommy. She's just looking up and she was talking to somebody or or something. Getting strange around here. That old phone ain't run a time since uh, them men hooked up our new line last year. But now it's ringing just like it did when we was all on the same line. It can't be ringing. It ain't possible. And now mommy's over there talking to somebody that ain't there. Or if they are, we can't see them. Pick it up. See what's going on. Hey, there's two old women are talking on there. I swear to God there is. I heard them plain as day. That can't be, Leash. You're scaring me now. You cut that. You get it, Andy. I ain't gonna touch it. Leash Stamper, <laughs> you're the man. You pick it up. Right now. See to it. Mommy? Mommy? Are you 
You okay? Lordy Eddie, she's gone. So, uh, you're not a ghost, but you are. <coughs> she is. <laughs> you gotta see the picture I took of me and my son. She Papa. took the picture you see my book. Oh, where's old? There he is. Let me see you two Riley boys. Come here, boys. The Riley boys. <laughs> Say, where's my money? Say that. Now you say it. No. Knew you wouldn't. Get me backstage, getting ready for scene 4B. He's just getting ready to go out and video, yeah, and I heard the curtain start shutting. Is he a ghost? Live or Memorex?